Okay, great. Thanks a lot. Um, you know, I'm excited to talk about this here, um, the play, the midline triple, and, and it's a play that um, we've been running here at Cary Grove for um, for close to 10 years now. And, um, you know, it's it's certainly not our bread and butter uh, play, but it, but it's really been a difference maker in different seasons. And, and so, um, so I'm going to talk about midline triple and uh, kind of just get right into it here. Here's a little bit of information about Cary Grove in the event that uh, that you're you're not from Northern Illinois. Um, we are we are a school of about 1,800 kids, and our enrollment is going down uh, pretty consistently. This year, we're going to be actually probably about uh, uh, about 1730. So we're down about 70 kids from last year, um, and uh, and we've got about 100 105 players right now in our program. So you kind of get an idea of 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 just the size of our school. Um, we combine Cary and Fox River Grove, two towns, and, um, and, and in Illinois, there's eight classes, and, and we're right on the bubble between six and seven, eight being the largest. Um, I've been a coach for six years, and we've, I, I've been at the school for, uh, this will be my 17th year at the school, and we've been a true flex bone, triple option program and team since 2004, and what I mean by that is uh, we're under center. Um, we play with, uh, we play with a, a, we can play anywhere with a split end and tight end and two split ends, but we are under center and we're a, we're a flex bone triple team. Um, and you can see the, the success that we've had since 2004, um, you know, and, and, uh, and we're, we're very proud of what we've done. Um, and, and a big part of that is, is our offense that we run, we believe. This is our, this is our offense, um, you know, so you kind of see, just generally speaking, um, what we run um, as far as our, our read plays and then some of the handoff plays that we run. Um, our handoff plays uh, will vary from year to year, but our core plays, those top three at the top there, tend not to, uh, tend not to change. Those are the plays that we really, we really run. Um, our formations here, um, this is our double tight formation. Well, we run that quite a bit. Um, we also run our, our two split end. Uh, our formation, ace formation, um, we'll run a, a one split end and, and one tight end formation right here. Um, we'll run with a flex as well. So we'll have our, our normal uh, uh, split end and then we'll bring them down here. Um, from a personnel standpoint, depending on what we have from year to year, this player might be a tight end who normally has his hand down, but then we'll move out as well. But we'll play with that, that flex split right there. Um, our unbalanced formation, we bring the split end from the from this side here and just bring them over to that side right here. Uh, we cover our tight end. Uh, we, do, we don't put our tight end on the nub. Uh, I know a lot of schools do that and, and we've actually tried it, um, uh, but we just have uh, found that it's too expensive to teach our, our, our tight end to play you know, backside tackle and vice versa with our tackle. And then lastly, we'll also play with our unbalanced with a, with a flex look right there too. So, those are our those are our basic formations that we run. Um, our A frame, just so you kind of get an idea of what that looks like, we paint our lines. Each line that we paint on the ground is five feet apart, um, and so uh, it's a ten yard, you know, thirty feet from from line to line right here. Um, the heels of the fullback in our in our offense is at five yards, uh, so you can kind of see that right there. And then we paint a, we paint a line right here. Uh, for our defensive linemen. Um, I'm not going to talk about, you know, how we practice midline triple tonight, but um, when we do practice, um, that line right there is important because a lot of times those scout guys, they want to creep up here and, and it really, it messes our quarterback's uh, uh, read and it, me it messes up our quarterback with his pitch. So um, we paint a line on the ground to make sure the defensive linemen stay behind there. And then we also put a, a dot on the ground to represent the outside foot of the tackle or the tight end. And so that's what those are there. And then our slots will use those um, when we don't have our linemen here. Um, and then additionally, um, we put those dots on the ground so that our linemen, when they come down and, and they get into the A-frame with us, that they know exactly where they need to line up and we get that consistent split and we get that consistency right there. So uh, just something that we do with our, with our, uh, our A-frame. Um, so we're speaking the same language tonight. We, uh, we go one, two, three from the inside of the guard uh, to head up to outside shade. And then we call a four, a five, and a six. 
Um, I, you know, when I was in college, that was our, that was four I, but when I came to Cary Grove, that was a four and it's stayed a four. Um, and then we add a, add a zero to an alignment. So a 20 linebacker is uh, right behind that two technique right there. Um, so, you know, why to run uh, midline triple? Um, as I said, uh, midline triple is, is, a, is a good play for us, but our bread and butter really is inside veer and midline follow. And so uh, midline triple gives us the ability to get the ball to the perimeter while also holding the inside with our fullback track. Um, up front, it's virtually the same blocking for most of the offense. There's going to be some differences, but for the most part, it's a fairly inexpensive play uh, from, from the lineman's perspective. Um, that, that play side tackle and sometimes the play side guard have to change things a little bit, uh, but by and large, they can kind of apply their midline follow rule for most of what they want to do. We have the potential to read number one in our inside veer counting and make him the pitch key. Um, and so we believe that uh, changing that player's um, responsibility um, is, is big advantage for us. If that player is a fullback player in inside veer, um, and then he's also a fullback player on, on midline triple, uh, well, that's an easy read for our quarterback to pitch that ball, and, and it's really pretty tough for that kid as well. Um, we have the potential in this off, in this play to not block two down linemen. And um, for, for us, uh, year in and year out, we typically aren't playing with the biggest guys. And so not blocking the two down linemen um, to the play side right there, that's pretty appealing to us. So, uh, so that, that is what midline triple allows us sometimes. Um, as you'll see, it's a great motion control play, um, and, and it really is almost a counter play if the safeties are running with the motion. And so um, we, it, maybe it, it counts as two plays almost for us as far as a read play and also as a, as a uh, counter play. And then finally, it's a real good play to run to the nub uh, out of unbalanced. Um, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play those clips at the end um, because – you know, when we go to our unbalanced side, I haven't done this, run the stats on it, but we run to the unbalanced side quite a bit. And when you get that illusion of motion to the unbalanced side and then you bring it back to the nub, um, that's pretty good too. Uh, so before you run out and run midline triple here tonight, there's a couple things to, to really consider before you do it here. Um, I can't emphasize this enough. Inside veer and midline follow, those are our core plays. We practice those on Tuesdays and Wednesdays during the week. We practice them hard. It's what our kids know. Uh, our kids are programmed to run those plays. Midline, midline triple is really a complimentary play in our offense. And so just statistically, this is the number of times that we've run the play and number of total offensive snaps that we've had in the following seasons here. And you can see that the play, you know, it's not a heavy, heavily run play, but it's been very, very good from the standpoint of it's been some game-breaking kind of plays. And so we feel like even though it hasn't been a, a huge part of what we do, it's been, uh, it's been worth keeping in. And, uh, and I think it's, it's interesting to note that in 2014, um, that may have been our, our best offensive year uh, that we've had here, uh, maybe with the exception of our 2009 team. We ran 843 plays, scored a lot of points. We ran the play 14 times. So what you'll find when you run this play is that um, you, you think you know it all, and then you get humbled when you don't have speed. And so in 2009, the play was lights out. It was a great play for us. So we went into the, to the season in 2010, figuring we knew how to coach. We were, we were the experts. And... Um, we learned real fast that our backs were not the same backs that we had in 2009. So you really gotta, you really gotta know what you have from a from a personnel standpoint. Um, defensively, um, because it's more of a complementary play, we don't particularly run it against every front. We'll run inside veer and midline follow against any front that's out there and execute it. But this is a play that we're really looking at certain fronts. So the five-two, the three-three. Uh, a 50 reduction, an eagle, those are the kinds of fronts that we feel it works best. Um, we can make it work versus a 4-3, a 6-1, 4-4, but it also require, it requires a little bit on the defense's end um, where they maybe have to play a little bit undisciplined. Maybe they're moving with the motion. Um, and then the last thing is your play side tackle really needs to know 
who the play side linebacker is so that he can take his best path to gain leverage on that play side linebacker because that's a real key block for this play. So the constants that we have, every you know whether it's midline follow or midline triple, um, in our counting, we're going to read the first man from a one out. And number one and number two are always the same in midline triple and midline follow. From our, like I said, from our play side guard to our backside, um, it's virtually the same. Quarterback and fullback footwork and tracks, it's exactly the same. We can run it with four foot splits and we can run it with one foot splits. Um, we don't feel that it matters. And we can also run it with a split end, a tight end, or a flex. Um, and so whether you're running midline foul or midline triple, those are, those are some of our constants. Just real quick here on, on how we block midline follow. Um, we're going to block the first man, or we're going to read the first man from a, from a one out. We're going to block the second man from a one out with our play side tackle right here. Um, and then our play side slot is going to insert and block the first linebacker from a 10 out, which you're going to see right here. Okay. And so that's, that's what we do. Okay, and, that, and that's our midline follow. And then when we run midline triple, you know, from a rule standpoint, um, you know, these are virtually the same rules as they would have if it was, if it was um, uh, midline follow versus midline triple, okay? And I know this is going to be posted later on, so if I go through this kind of quickly here, um, you know, I know, I know it'll be in the, in the vault and you can get all this information here later on, but I just want to give you kind of big, big picture here about why we feel like it's it's a, an inexpensive play for us. Where it gets where it gets different here, um, and I drew it up against the 5-2 first, and I'm going to show you some film here in a second, is our play side tackle, play side guard, our slot, and our backside slot. So our play side tackle, in, in, in midline follow, he's blocking number two in our counting. So this would be number one, and that would be number two. But in midline triple, we're going to read number two as our pitch key. Okay, so our play side tackle has to know, he's got to think a little bit. He just can't think, oh, it's midline, I'm going to go block number two, like the rest of the group can kind of do. He's got to think and know what he needs to do. And if the guard is uncovered, he will outside release and block the second level defender to the backside right there. Our play side guard versus the 50 is the only time that he really has to change his technique. It doesn't change his who he has to block. It just changes his technique. So he's going to take an outside vertical step, aiming at that 20 linebacker who's over him. And, uh, and then if he doesn't block that guy, if he scrapes, he's going to go to the backside backer. And this is different from midline follow because in midline follow, he's going to take an inside step at that backer. And if that backer is here, well, we've got an insert from our play side slot and he can then move on to that backside backer. But because we don't have that insert insert right here, he's got to take that outside step and get there. So that's just a finite detail um, that I think is worth noting. Our play side slot, he's going to twirl motion. Um, and, we, and we tell him no, no, um, no deeper than the, the play side tackles inside leg. And, um, and you'll see in film here, it, it's all ish. Sometimes they get a little deeper and sometimes they don't go, you know what I mean? It, it, this is, this is clinic talk right now. Okay. But that's what we tell them. And that's, that's what we try to teach them. All right. And they go out and they block for the pitch. Um, the, the big thing is they don't block the read. So he's got to know who number two is in midline triples. He just doesn't run out there and block that guy. Okay. Our backside slot is going to get what we call advantage alignment because he can't go in motion. And then he's going to get into pitch phase uh, right there. And, our play side uh, split end is going to do the same thing he does on on, uh, on midline follow. So I'm going to show you a little video here of uh, of midline triple versus the five two and and most of the clips that I have here tonight are from a split end alignment, but uh, the first couple here are with a tight end. And I've got an end zone shot here too, so you can kind of see this is from both angles here. But in our counting here, this is number one. And this is number two right here. So that's our fullback give key, and that's our pitch key right there. Our tackle is going to outside release and, and bracket that linebacker. Our guard's going to go vertical and go backer to backer right there. Okay. And then our tight end is going to go up to that safety right here. It's an easy read for our quarterback because the pitch key went way in. Um, he probably would have been okay if he kept it, but he knew that number four was faster than him and would score, so he pitched in the ball. 
So you see this again right here. There's number one and number two. The linebacker scrapes over the top right there. And then we get the we get it out in the perimeter. Same team here, uh, running it more towards the boundary. Okay. And then and then the same kind of concept right there. One and two are attacking them, are really attacking the fullback. And our fullback ran for 2,400 yards that year. And so it was, it would, you know, it made sense that they were very fullback conscious, but that opened up our, our pitch, our pitch play right there. Okay. I don't think I have the, uh, the end zone copy of this play here, but a uh, sim similar concept right here. This is from this season right now. Okay. So this, this year they've got two up here on the line of scrimmage. It's a pull pitch and you really got to work with those quarterbacks. And I think one thing worth mentioning about how we practice is every time that we practice in our Bama and our perimeter game, uh, we practice against shields and against players. Uh, our coaches are not the reads. And we, we have to coach our scout guys to attack that quarterback, not only to, not only to be there, but to hit him. We tell them to put that, sh that shield, and they, they have shields, the, the Gilman shields, right underneath the face mask of the quarterback so he gets used to that hot read right there and really getting used to, to, to getting rid of that ball. Um, we'll get the end zone shot here to show you what that looks like right there. But 5-2, and you'll notice here that our splits are really tight right here, okay? The previous time, our splits were real wide, um, and we're able to run the same play. When you tighten your splits, um, oftentimes that will get the ball out of your fullback's hands and get the ball in the perimeter because you're bringing in the read a little bit closer. Um, so that's that's how we're running it here versus that versus the 5-2. Okay, and we're getting the ball out in the perimeter there.